Oedipus has a really interesting convergence property under the weak learning assumption, which is that its error rate decays exponentially fast. So weak learning is a lot stronger than you might actually think it is. So um, I'll get into that a little bit, but first I wanna show you that that's actually true. Okay, so the theorem we're gonna prove is the following. It's that the misclassification error of Adibus, this is its, HT is its combined classifier there, this guy, um, that the error rate of this uh, combined classifier is less than the following quantity over here, which decays exponentially with the number of rounds of Adiboost. And then this, this thing over here, this gamma WLA, that is uh, greater, strictly greater than zero, and it is a result of the weak learning assumption. So in particular, uh, the weak learning assumption says that Adiboost error rate, so the, the error rate of the weak learning algorithm, is always um, a little bit less than one half, okay? Now, the amount that it's less than a half is called the edge. All right, so um, epsilon t, that's the error rate of Adiboost. It has to be less than a half for the weak learning algorithm, no matter what distribution you put into it, uh, what distribution of data you put into it. It has to give you um, a, a little bonus over one half, and in particular, the, the amount that it's better than a half is called the edge, right? This is the edge over random guessing. And then the weak learning assumption is that uh, that edge is always bigger than gamma WLA, which is strictly bigger than zero, all right? So this is the weak learning assumption right there, that gamma WLA. All right, so let's actually go and try to prove this thing. And it seems like too good to be true, right? Like the, that the error decays exponentially fast, but <laughs> that's the weak learning uh, assumption for you. Okay, so let's let's actually go and, and prove this. Okay, so I'll write here proof. And then I'm gonna, the, there are two main steps in this proof. Uh, the first is to write down the recursion between the, ex, the uh, exponential loss at time t plus one and time t, and then it's to unravel that recursion. So let's, let's do that, okay? So I have my exponential loss here. Okay, these are all vectors. I may not I may not decide to write them all as vectors, but like I may not include that little bar notation. But in any case, I'll start off with it. Okay, so this is from the recursion. You know that Adiboost adds um, alpha t to we classifier jt at each step. Okay, so let's write down the exponential loss here: one over n, sum over i, e to the negative m lambda i. Okay, but this lambda plus alpha t ejt. Okay, I may I may omit the vector notation if you don't mind. That's because it's a. I'm gonna forget all those lines. All right, cool. So then I can rewrite this as a one over n sum over i e to the negative, and then I'm gonna pull out this um, alpha. This the same thing I did before. I'm gonna pull that m through, right? I'm going to write the term separately. So m lambda t i minus alpha t, and then this is m i j t, because it's again, e j t means look at that j t column of m, i means take that i -th component, and so you just end up with m i j t. Cool. All right, now I'm going to separate this again into two sums. Uh, one sum for the points where MIGT is one and the other for where MIGT is minus one. So I'm separating it into the points that Adiboost got right at that iteration and then it got wrong at that iteration. All right, so one over N sum over I such that MIGT is one. I said I was gonna get rid of the bars, didn't I? Well, I'm sure I'll forget sometime. Okay, so then this term, this is alpha t, and this is supposed to be multiplied by 1, which is mijt, so cool. Plus the other term. And then this is going to be a plus alpha t because it's a minus alpha t times mijt, which is negative 1 for this term. Good. All right. Happy. Then I'm going to pull out the uh, 
e to the alpha, negative alpha t from this term and the e to the alpha t from the other term All right, so now um, I want to remind you of some notation. I'm gonna change notation about four times just because it's convenient. Okay, so I'm just gonna say recall that DTI, just by definition during the coordinate descent view, we defined DT uh, this way. Where D DT is that normalization factor and then we also have d plus just being the the DTIs uh, where uh, MIJT was 1. And then, of course, we have d minus, which is actually 1 minus d plus. Now, d, d minus is actually the critical term here because you see d minus is, um, that's the, that's Adebus error rate, right? That's the sum of the uh, the weights of the points that were misclassified. So D minus is going to factor in pretty heavily into everything we do. All right, let's go back to black. And then... Okay, so with that notation, um, what I have is that this thing over here that's actually unnormalized dt. And then if I sum that over the points where Adebus correctly classified, then I have an unnormalized d plus. <laughs> okay, so what, what I end up with is um, e to the negative alpha t, one over n. Uh, and then this is actually d plus, but then I have to put the normalization factor here so that, you know, yeah, so that it's correct. Cool. All right, so e, e, then um, the other term I have e to the alpha t, and this one is the d minus term. Great. Now I'm going to do another notational trick of the same kind of genre. <laughs> um, and I'll say here uh, that I want to remind you that z is just the sum of these guys, right? So it's just the normalization factor. Just make sure that we have a discrete probability distribution of the data points. Okay, so we end up with this being zt. But in fact, that is the exponential loss. It's exactly, it's exactly the exponential loss. Uh, except for the factor of 1 over n, right? The the R train was supposed to be, it was supposed to have a 1 over n out the front, so I have to multiply this by n. Okay, so what this means for us is that zt over n equals R train. Okay, so now we're going to end up with this lovely recursion. Okay, so I think I have to do this on the next page here. But in any case, uh, what's going to happen, um, well, actually, yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen is that we're going to end up with, uh, by the way, all these things are equal to r lambda t plus 1. So maybe I'll put it, maybe I'll see if I can put it all together at the bottom here. So r train lambda t plus 1 equals what? Okay, zt over n the zt over n up here and that is the same thing as our train and same with this guy over on the other side here zt all right so i have our train at time t times e to the negative alpha t, d plus, plus e to the alpha t, d minus. Nice. 
Okay, we're getting closer to it. Let's keep going. And then, as we know, d plus is 1 minus d minus. We want to get everything in terms of d minus because that's at a boost error rate, and we want to keep everything in terms of that. Okay. So, let's do another aside. We'll go with blue. Let's see here. Okay, I'll write recall. Alpha t equals one half log one minus d minus over d minus. And so what that means uh, here is that we have e to the alpha equals one minus d minus over d minus. And we have e to the negative alpha being this is All right, so we got to plug that in. I knew I'd forget all those bars. I knew it would happen. It always happens. All right, so what, what I have is d minus over 1 minus d minus over 1 half times 1 minus d minus plus whatever that thing is okay these two terms when I simplify they're the same so I have a 2 Now, um, since, okay, so, so since, uh, since d minus equals epsilon t, right? I'll just say since d minus equals epsilon t, just by definition um, of those two quantities, then we get this thing equals times two, epsilon t times 1 minus epsilon t to the 1 half. Okay, cool. So that's where I needed to get. I'm just going to copy this to the other page. And then we can unravel our recursion. Okay, so let's do it maybe in a different color just to show that we're doing something different. And this is where the fun begins. Okay, so the base case for the recursion is where uh, just the coefficients are equal to zero at the first iteration. So in that case, the exponential loss is actually just one over n times um, sum from i equal one to n of e to the negative m lambda one. Um, and then of course, this all of these terms are zero. Um, and so since I have n terms, then this whole thing just equals one. Okay, so that's the base case. Base case is done. So now uh, let us go to the real case. This is where our train, and we want to look at lambda t, right? This is after t iterations of Attaboost. And we get this product, t equals 1 to t. And then what is the product again? Okay, it's 2 times, and then this 1 half, I'll just make the square root, same thing. Okay. Now, 
this this is where we're gonna start messing around with the weak learning assumption here okay I'm gonna grab another color maybe this one okay so by the weak learning assumption epsilon t must be less than a half okay, it must be less than a half okay so we're gonna notate um, epsilon t equals one half minus and then this is the edge there okay so and that edge by the weak learning assumption must be bigger than gamma w l a and this has to be true all the time for all times okay so I'm just gonna just write down here that this is one one half plus gamma t because you know just for convenience when I go to actually plug it in, which is right now. Okay, let's go back to our lovely blue. Not that that's the same blue, but nope, maybe it's not. Oh, well, sorry. Okay. Our train lambda t equals, and there's my product, two. Now, epsilon t. That's one half minus the edge. And then one minus epsilon is one half plus the edge. Okay, so then this thing equals product two times, and then this is one quarter minus gamma t. So I just simplified there, nothing fancy. And this actually equals, um, actually, maybe I'll do it on this line. Go down here so I can zoom in a little more. Product. And I'm going to put that two in. I get one minus four gamma t squared. Okay, now a trick. Hmm. Okay, so let's use. Our trick, which is one plus x is less than epsilon to the x. Okay, so epsilon like that, epsilon to the x. Sorry, e to the x, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still thinking about epsilons. Ugh, yikes. You know, it's really hard to do two things at the same time, in particular talk and write about. Talk about something you're not writing about, it's really hard. Okay, all right, so this bound always holds, it holds for all x, so one plus x is less than e to the x, good. All right, so then go back to blue. Okay, and then this is e to the negative four gamma t squared, like that, just when I plop in that bound. Okay, now there's a product. Okay, so what I can do here, I can take that one half, put it Take this, sorry, square root, put it in as a one half. Take that product, put it in as a sum. Okay, so I end up with e to the negative two sum over t gamma t squared, okay, is less than or equal to, and then this is the special weak learning assumption. So this is where the magic just happened. Is e to the negative two gamma weak learning assumption squared Okay, so that's where we are. Very last line of the proof. So after knowing that the training error is less than that thing, put it all together, starting from the classification error. And then the classification error obviously is less than the exponential loss. And that's true because of this thing that we know very, very early on, right? e to the negative x less than, or sorry, greater than 1 if z is less than 0, less than or equal to 0. Okay, so um, that's what this line comes from. And then um, thanks to our proof, we have that this is less than or equal to e to the two negative, negative two, there we go again, okay, times two, 
And that's it, that's the proof, okay? This is the thing we wanted to prove. That's it. So what it means is that the weak learning assumption is actually really, really strong, right? The weak learning assumption is, is telling you that, um, that, so if the weak learning assumption holds, you can converge exponentially fast to zero. Um, so in reality, uh, if, I mean, if, if the data are separable, Adibus does converge to, <laughs> to zero uh, exponentially fast, but um, if the uh, data are not separable, that means that the weak learning assumption just, it can't hold, right? It can't hold. And so um, you cannot ha always have an edge for every weighted data set that's strictly below, that's strictly above zero. It just can't happen, right? It, um, you, you have to have an error rate of, uh, of a half at some point because otherwise, um, otherwise, even though the data set is not separable, you'll still be able to separate it exponentially quickly. So that's the, the interesting aspect of the strength of